the heritage of Alaska. Brought to you in the public interest by the National Bank of Alaska. Friday evening, March 29th, 1867, Secretary of State William Henry Seward was playing whist with members of his family at the Seward residence in Washington, D.C. The doorbell rang. The whist game was stopped in mid-play. A servant answered the door. Baron Edward de Stoko, envoy extraordinary and minister plenipotentiary of Russia was admitted. Stoko was a chubby person with enormous mutton chop sideburns and an infectious smile. He beamed as he entered the living room. Secretary Seward greeted him affably. I have dispatched Mr. Seward from my government by cable. The emperor gives his consent to the session. Tomorrow, if you like, I will come to the department and we can enter upon the treaty. Seward, with a smile of satisfaction at the news, said, why wait till tomorrow, Mr. Stokoe? Let us make the treaty tonight. But your department is closed. You have no clerks and my secretaries are scattered about the town. Never mind that, responded Seward. If you can muster your legation together before midnight, you will find me awaiting you at the department, which will be open and ready for business. Messengers and carriages were dispatched in all directions, and less than two hours afterward, light was streaming out of the windows of the Department of State, and business was going on there as at midday. By four o'clock on Saturday morning, March 30th, the treaty was engrossed, signed, sealed, and ready for transmission by the President to the United States Senate. The graphic description of events of that historic night is contained in a book just off the press entitled Purchase of Alaska by Archie W. Shields and published by the University of Alaska and the Alaska Purchase Centennial Commission. Archie Shields for more than 50 years has been an ardent student of Alaska history and he's researched every known source of material on the subject. The book The Purchase of Alaska is a significant contribution to the literature of the 49th state. Well, the treaty was submitted by President Andrew Johnson to the United States Senate that same Saturday morning. But as the Congress was adjourning at noon that day and the next session of Congress would not convene for two months, a special session of the Senate was called for the following Monday, April 1st. Meetings of the Committee on Foreign Affairs were held on April 1st, 3rd, and 5th to consider the treaty. And on April 8th, the Committee announced the treaty will be reported favorably. The next day, Senator Charles Sumner Chairman of the Committee on Foreign Affairs spoke for three continuous hours to a spellbound Senate and packed gallery on why the United States should buy Alaska. Historians are agreed that Senator Sumner made one of the most learned speeches ever delivered in the United States Senate. It was also one of the most effective and it moved the Senate to speedy action. The ratification of the treaty did not encounter much opposition in the Senate. When the final vote was taken, it was 27 were in favor and 12 against. Many senators who were well disposed toward Russia then proposed to make the vote unanimous. In this they failed. Two senators voted against the resolution. And thus the treaty of session was ratified in just 10 days after it was received by the Senate. To this day, Charles Sumner's speech of over 100 pages is a documentary source of information on Alaska of that day and its potential for the future. The speech is part of the text of the book the Purchase of Alaska. I recommend for your reading The Purchase of Alaska by Archie W. Shields.